Some people pirate video games, others pirate movies, but there's also people out there that pirate books. Sites like Z Library and Library Genesis really cater to these bookworms on the digital high seas because they offer millions of scholarly journals, textbooks, novels, and more for anyone to download for free. And like most piracy sites, you download these books with a BitTorrent client, and ideally you're going to seed those downloads for some time so that this peer-to-peer -peer literature exchange network can remain strong. Now, even though books make up a very small portion of the copyrighted material that is pirated each year, it's still illegal and treated as a kind of theft in most countries. And just like how there's big studios in Hollywood that'll come after you for pirating their precious work, there's also giant publishing companies that pay lawyers to use their own BitTorrent clients to harvest the IP addresses from popular torrent swarms. And if those IPs can be traced back to individual users' ISPs, then they're going to send out threatening letters to make people either stop pirating those books or get good and just use a VPN for their torrenting. But it turns out that the biggest pirate downloading the most from these online libraries isn't some kid who's taking a whole lot of classes in college and trying to save money on their textbooks. No, it was meta all along. Newly released court documents reveal that the company formerly known as Facebook torrented at least 81.7 terabytes of data just last spring across multiple shadow libraries like Zlib, Libgen, Anna's Archive, and other sites. And before this, they torrented another 80 terabytes of scientific articles specifically from Libgen. Meta knew that what they were doing was wrong, and they even took steps to try and conceal it. They made sure not to use IP addresses that are associated with Meta's servers when torrenting, because otherwise people would have caught on to this a long time before it ever went to court. Literally some other pirate on the internet would have been like, holy shit, someone at Meta just downloaded every single romantic novel that mankind has ever written. There must be some serious bean flicking that's going on over there at headquarters. It turns out that a lot of the dirty work at Meta was actually carried out by individual employees using laptops to, I guess, torrent a whole bunch of books in the background while they continued doing their work. And during the pre-trial, Meta waited until two hours before the closure of fact discovery to submit the documents showing that they knew that they were using pirated content despite it being illegal. There were internal discussions at Meta about buying books, textbooks in particular, from a major publisher versus just pirating them from Libgen. So weighing out the cost of, oh, okay, well, we got to pay this much if we're going to get all of these books, or we can just try to pirate it and get away with it, you know, maybe pay a small fine, but we're Facebook, we're used to that. And the Zuck himself claimed to have not known about Meta using pirated books from Libgen, but... The court documents show that the decision to use Libgen was made after the issue of how to get these books was escalated to Mark Zuckerberg. So not only did he know what was going on, but he was probably in the meeting where the actual decision to become pirates was made. And there were several other Meta employees who lied as witnesses about what Meta was doing, claiming that they had no idea about the torrented material, even though there's literally messages from some of these people saying that they feel like torrenting from a corporate laptop doesn't feel right. And you know, the worst part about all of this really is the fact that Meta did everything they could to avoid seeding these torrents because then they would be distributing copywritten works. So Meta isn't just the biggest pirates that are on the internet, but they're also the biggest leeches. They don't seed people, very sad. Now, 82 terabytes of data is one of those numbers that just doesn't have any meaning to most people. So here's some analogies. Black Ops 6, the new COD game, takes up about 84.4 gigabytes. So Meta could have downloaded almost a thousand copies of that game compared to how many books they downloaded. But obviously text and game textures are very different. So let's do a text to text comparison. 
I recently downloaded a parts catalog for some specific Mitsubishi tractor models, um, specifically the MT-210D is what I was interested in. And this manual has 224 pages in total. It takes up 17 megabytes of storage. And as you can see, the pages in this manual were actually scanned in. Uh, so this is technically a bunch of pictures instead of text, which usually takes up more space. But hey, a lot of these pirated books were probably scanned in as PDFs as well. So if we were to try to do an apples to apples comparison and assume that every page of every book meta pirated takes up roughly as much space as it does in this PDF, then we're talking over a billion pages of content that meta stole. And you guys know, I'm not a harsh critic of internet piracy. I do a little bit of yo-ho-hoing myself. I basically did that to download this parts catalog here. But what Meta did is a little much, okay? Meta didn't just download a car, as the old saying goes. They downloaded a whole ass dealership, a factory, a distribution center, and an auto shop. Hell, they own every single car wash that's in your city. And to make matters worse, Meta didn't just pirate these books for their own entertainment or to try to fix a tractor like I'm gonna do here or even to try and help some of their younger employees get through college by creating a free repository of textbooks for them to use. No, Meta did this to make money. These books are being used to train their AI models and this is the reason why when you use Llama or really any other AI, because let's be real, all of the AI companies are pirating stuff to train their models. But this is the reason why when you ask them to make up a short story for you, it sounds so similar to things that you've probably read before. And you could argue that pirating books specifically to train an AI is even worse than pirating these books off and then trying to sell them out of a bootleg bookstore yourself because creative work like writing is one of the careers that AI really is a big threat to. Obviously, there's different levels of risk depending on the type of writing. I would think that scientific publications, for example, uh, or things like my tractor manual here are safer because these are nonfiction works that people don't read for entertainment. They read them because they want to learn something or figure out how to get something done. And we don't got time for any AI hallucinations. But when it comes to like these romance novels that so many women buy, for example, which by the way, make up like 18% of adult fiction sales, I think an AI could churn something out like that all day long. The same is probably true for other hits like Harry Potter and The Hobbit. A lot of best-selling fictional works are very archetypical and formulaic. They're basically the same stories that are being told a different way. And I don't say that to say that the writers aren't creative. I think they are, and I enjoy these stories. But what I'm saying is I don't think writers are going to be able to keep up with AI. And to make matters worse, we already live in a world where writing books really isn't even the main thing that really successful writers make money off of. Take J.K. Rowling, for example. She wrote the Harry Potter books, and she made a grip off of it. But... That just laid the groundwork for the Harry Potter movies. And remember, they split that last book into two separate movies. And then you've got the toys and the merch and the theme parks and all the other stuff that goes with the Harry Potter world. I can't tell you how many people I've seen that are older than me who have spent thousands of dollars of their own money on Harry Potter merch. And J.K. Rowling is getting a percentage of all of that, or at least I would imagine she's getting a percentage of all of that. Uh, and the reason I bring this up is, imagine if the toy manufacturers and the book to film adapters just decided to use AI instead of writers. They could use it to backfill and create these entire fictional worlds that people get absorbed into and become super fans of. And this has already been done long before the invention of large language models. He-Man was a toy before he ever had a TV show or a movie. G.I. Joe was a toy even before he had a comic book. Bionicles were a toy before they were in 
anything. Like, I'm pretty sure it's just something that Lego made up and then they're like, holy crap, we're making money off of this. Quick, make a movie. Quick, make a TV series. Quick, make a video game. So just keep an eye out for this. This is something that, you know, if you care a lot about it, you're really going to have to figure out whether you're consuming something that was originally generated from an AI or from a real person, because I've got a feeling that this stuff is going to flood the market.